He's 14 years old with his eye on the 2020 Olympics. Siku Kina is the fastest kid in Queensland. I love running and I'm really focused on it. I love the competition and the personal challenge. I just want to get better and better. Deafness and hearing are equal when I'm running. I want to get better and better so I can get to the Olympics. Siku escaped the civil war in Liberia. He was five when he arrived in Brisbane, Australia. Siku's the only deaf person in his family, so he finds other ways to express himself at home. I got used to lip reading my parents and I learned to understand their gestures. When I arrived here, I had no English and no Auslan. I had nothing. Siku loves living in Australia. He was introduced to Australian Sign Language when he arrived. His local high school is a very inclusive place. Sign language or Auslan is an optional subject. And while most of the students are hearing, almost everyone signs. You can look out in the playground and see students communicating in sign and they may or may not be deaf. Um, it's just a part of, um, part of the school. It's good that Auslan is recognised for its distinctness as a language and um, for deafness as a culture. We have courses running after school and they're full. So there's a, um, a very exciting growing awareness of um, Auslan and, uh, and value for it and excitement in learning it. In Siku's group of friends, only one other boy is deaf, but they all sign. Siku's pretty comfortable here. Well, the Siku I see now is a very social um, person. Everybody knows him because of his athletic achievements. He's very comfortable going up and initiating conversations with a wide variety of people. Um, so some people have called him a social butterfly. <laughs> if it stayed in Africa, it's unlikely Siku would have learnt any sign. While life at school is going well, communication at home is strained. Most of the time they speak African at home. My mother can sign a little bit and can fingerspell a little bit, but how we communicate is mainly gesture. 
and I can lip read my mom's lips when she speaks African. But when she speaks English, I can't lip read her at all. My sister Bindu helps with signing between me and my mother. I talk to her and she tells mom what I've said. Sometimes I try to talk to mom, but mostly I just go through my sister. So she is the interpreter in the house. She goes between sign, African and English. I sign a little to her and she switches from English to African. That's how we manage. Communication at home could be difficult because um, he doesn't, he gets frustrated, angry, or sad. And it um, ends up, he, so, because he can't communicate, he ends up talking on his phone a lot or just texting and stuff and not making small communications or something or watching TV. Siku's mother, Fatima, runs a daycare in her home to provide for the family. While she's grateful to be here, everything about life in Australia still feels foreign. It's tough to put the trauma of war behind them. I do have a lot of memories. I remember a good friend of mine. When the war happened, they took him and turned him into a child soldier. The soldiers made all the kids shoot their parents. And if they refused, they made the kids eat them raw. They told them war was fun. You will have fun shooting a gun off. It's good fun. They try and make war sound like fun to get them to join in. We heard the guns of the soldiers. There were four paths out of the village. We weren't sure which one to take. There were soldiers blocking every path. But my mom was really smart and found a way through. And we fled through the bushes. They were right behind us, coming after us. The child soldiers were closing in on us. My mom was trying to keep everyone together. We were all running. My father went a different way, so we lost my father. Everyone got scattered. I was in a group of eight running together. We kept going and going through the bush, and they kept chasing us. A quarter of a million Liberians died in one of Africa's bloodiest civil wars. Siku's family was lucky. Only about one in a thousand refugees made it to Australia. We didn't know which way to go, but then we saw a refugee camp. It was an American camp. There was only about 500 refugees in the camp, and they gave us shelter. It took mom three years to get all the permissions. There was a list of countries to choose from, but which country was the best one to go to? Mom talked to a few people and decided on Australia. It was a couple of years of checking visas and everything, posting forms, making sure everything was correct. And we finally landed in Australia. And we've done really well here. I'm 
are living in Australia, I think it's very important. Living in Africa is very, very difficult. They know some, and they take them like they are not human. That's what, like I was saying. Because in Australia, whether you deaf or not, they treat you like human. I don't miss Africa. I'm not interested in Africa. I couldn't do running there. They're not set up for it, really. They have all the facilities here. I'd rather be here. Yeah, they have, uh, like, Seku. All the deaf children, they have chicha. They sound to them. But in Africa, they don't have no one to sound. Only one, three people, like, in the city, but not in the interior. They have few people to sign in the city. But if you don't have that kind of person, how your child will go to school? Say, so could never go to school until here. Parents over there just want a hearing kid so it's easy to communicate. If they're deaf, they just put them down the toilet or something, they just disappear. You know, get rid of them somehow, maybe feed them to the dogs. And with schooling, they kick you out. The family loves socialising with other Liberians, but it's tough for Seku to join in. There's significant differences in how um, a family that um, has open communication in a language they're comfortable with, um, the child feels uh, they have identity and there's no frustration, things are discussed. At the other end of the spectrum, if there's a deaf student who's in a family situation where they, the family haven't learnt sign and communication is really difficult, then that has a lot of potential to be really risky. And there's frustration coming from either side, from the brothers and sisters, the mother and the deaf student. So if you look at it from outside, why didn't they learn signing? But, you know, families are complex. If you don't run fast, the parachute will drop down and drag around. What are the advantages of having a deaf coach? Well, you need it for communication. Siku's coach, Brad Schofield, sees enormous potential. He was a deaf kid himself, so he realises how Olympic success could totally change Siku's life. I grew up very differently to Siku. I grew up with oral training, no signing. But I was like Siku because I played a lot of sport at high school. Every day I would go to school, come home, play sport. I think it was very helpful because if I didn't have sport, what could I do? I would feel isolated, maybe feel depressed as well. Okay, do this please. Hey, hey, hang on, hang on. You need to be focused. I am. Brad's got to ride the clutch. He must keep Siku focused, but he also remembers what it's like to be 14. Hurry up. I said to Siku, you need to be within the 10 second mark for the 100 metres, if you want to make it to nationals this year. Hurry up. Focus. He was a little upset when I told him he needed to get to the 10 second mark because he thought that was pretty hard to achieve, but in all seriousness, he does need to improve. He's running 11.28 at the moment, so he can definitely improve. When Siku comes to training, it's a bit random. 
Sometimes he's silly. Sometimes he's focused. Sometimes he pretends to have an injury. With me, I just want to be relaxed, laid back. My body gets sore, but he keeps pushing me and pushing me and do more, do more. He's always focused on my time, trying to get it down. Sometimes he is actually sore, but sometimes it's just laziness. Siku's always had natural ability, but for a long time he wasn't winning, mostly because he couldn't hear the start gun. What I do is I look at the people on either side of me, and when they take off, I take off after them. But I have to look at them to know what to do. They can hear the starting gun, and they get the jump on me. It's not fair. It makes it hard for me. I'm at a disadvantage. We kept fighting and fighting, but everyone said no. But I was very stubborn. I wanted to have the flashing lights. So what I did was go to court. I went to the Human Rights Commissioner and said, that's discrimination. They're not giving me a flashing light. They should let me use one. I want to be the same as everyone else. I want it to be fair. So 12-year-old Siku lodged a complaint with the Human Rights Commission who helped fight his case at the High Court. And I won. They said, I must have a flashing light so I can compete in the races like everybody else. This was the first time anywhere a light system had to be provided in a mainstream race. For the first two years, I was really happy teaching Siku. He was really keen and trained hard, but then he went to high school. And things changed completely. And now he only comes to me once a week, sometimes not at all. Sometimes, I just want to quit. It's not worth it to me going to training every day when he doesn't even show up. <laughs> I told him, if you continue training this year the same as last year, you can go find another coach. I've been training with Brad for four years now. At the moment, I'm getting a little bit frustrated, a bit fed up. I just want him to relax a little, to calm down. The benefit of running for Siku is that it helps with his behaviour. I think without running, he would get into a fair bit of trouble. I think he gets frustrated because mm, I don't think Mum understood him that well. I think it's um, pretty sad, really. He doesn't really talk to me about those things, but I can see it. Just lately, he got really mad, and he, like, causes so much noise and he shouts and he stumps up the stairs and he locks himself up. He tries to destroy his phone and it's like, whoa. It's just like, it's really scary to watch. I just get sick of the communication hassles and I lose it. I lose my temper. 
It's just too hard for me. Everybody's hearing and they all just talk. It's not fair. I feel like my family neglects me. Everyone gets together and they're talking and having fun and laughing. And I just sit by myself. It's making me lose my temper. It's terrible when you have a child that can't, he can't talk. Only he, the only deaf child among my children. Sometimes I feel for him, but I can't do nothing about it. I want to talk to him, like I can talk to the sister that I can, because I can't sound. Mom's always having friends over, and they're talking and having fun, and I'm like, come on, learn to sign. That's what frustrates me, and then I lose it. It's not fair. She gets to talk to her friends, but not to me. If I were born in Australia, then by the time I am signing. Yeah. Africa, they don't sign. And when I came to Australia, it was a little bit difficult for the, I couldn't even speak English. When I go to English class, it's very difficult for me. I can't understand what's going on. And you know, Sunny is our book. You have to read and read. Sometimes, even if, if I know Sunny, I can read. If I read it and read, I can able to read something and give it to him, but I can't. Only the sister can help me sometimes. If the sister not around, it'd be more frustration. I feel like I'm trapped with my family. All they do is talk. That's what it's been like my whole life. I'm so used to it and I have to live with it. They never sign. Now they're trying, but they're lazy. It's difficult when you have a deaf child and you can't sign. And you don't know how I feel. Yeah. He's the only son I have, and he's deaf. I can't communicate with him. Oh, he thought I hate him. I don't hate him. Yeah. Too difficult. Too much for me. But I'll try. But I'll meet your son at the daughter circle. I have to make a decision. Maybe for a year to go stay with some deaf people and have good communication using signing. I'll be just like a hearing kid in a hearing family, being a deaf kid in a deaf family. Yeah, maybe just take a year away from home just to be happy and laugh and sign. Then once I'm happy again, go back home. He had to decide what to do, what he want. Yeah, so. He said he want to run. That's his dream, and I know his dream will come true one day. I see him every day, like they run his school very strong. He never gave up. So I think he will be a good boy in the future. Yeah, his future will be good. Siku's family believe in his Olympic dream and do what they can to support him. While he knows training will only get harder, the rewards are worth it. And he's not too keen on the alternative. Some lifestyles are pretty negative. There's lots of partying, lots of drinking, fighting. They aren't focused. They're just interested in how they look. They get into trouble with the police. They get a bad reputation. I don't want a bad reputation. The Olympics is more friendly. Everyone is there for the same reason. It's a lot more fun. You form friendships. You have good goals. It's something you can strive for, train for. You're part of a team. It's just really good. I believe I can be faster, get a better time. I have more in me to get faster. I don't want to give up now. 
I want to be consistent with my training, be motivated, and keep getting better times as I get older. Because my goal is getting to the Olympics. His first step in getting to the Olympics is to qualify in the Queensland State Championships. If you're out in front, just keep going. There's a little bit of wind, but you should be all right. You should be able to break the record. The wind might change a little bit today, but I think you can still break that record. So that's your goal for today. So make sure you get a good start. Really push out from the blocks, just like in training. You've had good starts at training, Keep your head down for about 30 metres, then head up, run tall, all right? Nice and tall. Make sure you use the power in your arms, and it helps with your legs. While Siku is working harder at his running, Fatima is working harder with her sign. You, too long, need short time. Shut time. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Siku's main race is the 100 metres. He's going to win it, but to qualify for the state champs, he needs a personal best. <laughs> yep, the first light works, the second light works. Yes, working. Siku beat his personal best and broke the long-standing state record. Hey, here are your medals. Gold for the 100 metres and silver for the 400. Good job. You've made state for both events.